In this video, we'll be looking at the attack and release settings of the compressor. The attack and release settings are actually pretty simple concepts to understand, but learning to use them properly can take a little bit of practice. And they can also have a similar symbiotic relationship like our threshold and ratio. So when we use them properly, they can actually help each other out. They play a huge role in how we can shape the different sounds that we work with and can certainly be a deciding factor on whether we'll use a certain compressor for specific instruments or specific situations. So the attack setting simply tells the compressor how long it's going to take before it actually reacts to the incoming audio signal. The attack actually plays a big role in the transient shaping and transient response of certain audio signals. A fast attack setting can actually be a few microseconds, and a slow attack setting can be up to 50 milliseconds or more. It's rare, however, that we would work with attack times anywhere outside of those ranges. So the one way that I'm always able to remember how the attack works is by remembering one of my old favorite childhood games that I used to play with my dad, and that was the dollar drop game. He would basically take a dollar and hold it in front of me, and I'd have to anticipate when he was going to let go of it. Then I'd have to catch it in between my fingers. A lot of the times it slipped away, but every once in a while I was fast enough to be able to catch it. And if I caught the dollar, I could keep it. And the attack of a compressor works exactly the same way when our audio signal comes into the compressor. So essentially we're just telling the compressor how fast it's going to react to those volume changes of our input signal. And the easiest way to kind of hear what the attack setting does is by using drums. Drums are the perfect example because when the stick hits the drum, there's a sharp transient and then the drum tails and resonates out. So for this example, we're going to be listening to a kick drum. So I'm gonna solo my kick drum track here, and we're actually going to be using our 500 series API 527 VCA compressor. There's a few different reasons for that, but mainly because it has an adjustable attack setting here. So before we start playing with the attack, I'm really gonna dial in some heavy compression with a high ratio and a low threshold, because it'll be that much easier to hear how the attack setting affects our audio signal. So we'll go ahead and start playback here. We'll click the in button to engage the compressor. Raise our ratio up pretty high, probably around 10 to one. See our gain reduction meter moving already. Then we'll really bring down our threshold. Okay, so you can see and hear that we're actually hitting the compressor quite hard and our gain reduction meter is almost maxing out. Now, as I increase the attack time, listen to what happens to that initial attack of our kick drum. So we're gonna increase it from about one millisecond. Bring it up to about 20 milliseconds. We'll bring it back down again. So you could see with the fast attack setting, the compressor was able to reduce the volume of that initial transient on the kick drum. But as we increase the attack time, it let more of the original kick drum transient through, which also gave it a punchier sound. So the attack is important because when we're mixing, we can use it to tailor the transient attack of every instrument in our mix. Now, obviously we won't be using those heavy of compression settings because it sounds a little bit squashed and overdone. So once we find out the sound of the attack that we want, we can start dialing back a little bit on our threshold and ratio and make it more tasteful. So we know we're getting the transient response that we want. Let's go ahead and mix this kick in with the rest of the kit. So we'll solo our drum bus and we'll take a listen here. So let's open up our attack. We'll increase it, see if we can get a good attack time. 15 milliseconds, we'll bring it down to around five. That sounds good. Start dialing back on our threshold and ratio. Start making this a little more tasteful. You can see our gain reduction meter isn't going down so far. That sounds good. Now, especially for hard rock songs like this, we can even go a step further and use the attack setting to make our kick drum more punchy, more present, and stand out in front of some of the other instruments in the mix. Let's dial all the way back on this attack setting again, and we'll slowly increase it as the mix plays.
Okay, so now we're gonna start looking at the release setting of the compressor, which you'll also hear referred to as the recovery on certain units. And sometimes it's more easily understood when you use the word recovery, and it's because of how this setting reacts to its transients. So once we have a sharp transient enter the compressor, the gain reduction circuit kicks in, and it turns the volume down. Once the volume is turned down, it has to go back up again so that it can catch the next transient. The time it takes to come back up to the threshold detection level again is known as the release or the recovery. Now the release also plays a big important part in tone shaping because of how certain compressors tone circuits react to gain changes. One of my favorite demonstrations for the release setting is actually on a snare drum, just because it's a little more in the frequency range that our ears are used to hearing and also because it has that perfect envelope shape with the sharp transient at the beginning and the slower resonant tail. So for the snare drum, you have a couple options. You could grab a VCA compressor or even a FET compressor, but one of my favorite tricks is actually to grab an optical compressor, especially when mixing rock. Now I really like the Teletronics LA-2A for certain scenarios, but I'm actually gonna grab our Art Pro VLA here because it has an adjustable release time and it might actually work a little better for demonstration. So we're gonna start playback and then we're gonna dial in our threshold and ratio and attack. And then we're gonna start taking a look at the release. Okay, so we'll engage the compressor. We'll start bringing up our ratio. We'll start bringing down our threshold. You can see our gain reduction meter down there. We'll start opening up our attack setting. Get some good pop from the snare drum. Okay, that sounded good. Okay, so now we got a nice attack on our snare drum. We're gonna start to take a look at what the release actually does. You'll see that faster release times give us a more aggressive sound, while slower release times really have a tendency of smoothing things out. What I want you to first look at though is our gain reduction meter. Right now, I have a fast release time. So when the snare passes through the compressor, look at how fast the gain reduction meter is reacting to the snare drum. When we increase the release time, you'll see a big difference as to how fast the compressor reacts to each snare drum hit. But you'll also hear a big difference in tone. Let's check it out. Okay, so here our release is set all the way to its minimum. We'll slowly start to increase it here. Take note of our gain reduction meter. really hear that change in tone. Once again, take note of our gain reduction meter and see how slow it's recovering. Bring it back down again. Here, it's a lot more aggressive sounding with that faster release. So one of the main questions that I get asked often is how do you know what attack and release times to select when grabbing a compressor and trying to dial in the perfect settings for a specific instrument. Well, the first thing is that you need to take into consideration some of the things that we've already learned about the different types of compression circuits and how they behave with certain audio signals. So you'll need to use some of that applied knowledge to make educated decisions. Now, I'll also have a downloadable cheat sheet that you can use if you're just getting started with compression. With a little bit of ear training and practice, you'll be able to use some of those educated decisions that you've been making along with that cheat sheet and start to learn how certain instruments should sound when put through a compressor. Now, my intention isn't to give you just random arbitrary information, especially when you're learning how to do something. The reason why I mention this is because once you start using a variety of different compressors, you'll see that not all of them have calculated measurements on the front. And you'll start to notice this even more so when you start getting into some of the more boutique units, like our Chandler 500 series Little Devil compressor that we're using here. You'll see that we have a variable attack that just goes from one to six arbitrary units and a release of fast, slow, and medium. Even in the manual, they say that they've never actually sat down and calculated the times. They just designed them to sound good. You'll also see even on another one of our VCA compressors that the speed setting is simply just an arbitrary value that says auto and fast. So if you're just getting started with using compressors, my recommendation is to start by using compressors that have a variable attack and release value and also refer to that downloadable cheat sheet and start to familiarize yourselves with different attack and release settings. And just remember that it's much easier to hear the attack and release settings when you have a low threshold and a high ratio. Once you've found the perfect attack and release settings, you can then back off on the threshold and the ratio 
and then adjusting it to be more tasteful. Now, a general rule of thumb is to use a fast attack and a slow release, or a slow attack and a fast release. And then once you start learning how certain compressors behave, you can really start to get crazy with the settings and start using it more like an instrument. In the next video, we'll be taking a quick look at the knee settings of the compressor. Stay tuned, and we'll see you then.